Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome you all back. Today, I'm going to be doing my intro to the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie reviews. Um, I hope that you guys liked the teaser that I did. Um, I do enjoy making those. I know it's very simple. I just do a picture slideshow with songs that appeared in whoever movies. I know I did them for uh, Stallone and Arnold. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the Van Damme one. Had some really cool pictures in there. Um, like I said, very simple. I just use Windows Movie Maker, which I hate. I really do hate Windows Movie Maker, but right now that's all I got because I don't want to spend a whole lot of money right now. I can't, I can't spend a whole lot of money right now because I'm not working, which I will, in an upcoming video, I will explain all about that. Um, once certain things get locked in, I will, uh, I will inform you guys of what's going on. So, yeah, I just wanted to do this video where, like I did also with Arnold and Stallone, just talk about, you know, my history with Jean-Claude Van Damme and his movies. Um, first of all, I've always been a huge Jean-Claude Van Damme fan ever since I was a little boy. Um, I just idolized Van Damme. You know, I wanted to be Jean-Claude Van Damme when I was a kid. And I think even as a kid, I liked Van Damme more than like Arnold and Stallone because he's a martial artist. I tend to like the martial artist guys more because, you know, Arnold and Stallone, you know, they're great. You know, I love them to death. You know, they're definitely larger than life people. You know, Arnold was a successful bodybuilder and a businessman before he became an actor. Uh, Stallone you know, was basically, he was Rocky. That's why I think Rocky was so successful, because he pretty much was Rocky. Um, not, you know, he wasn't a boxer or anything, but in his life, you know, I think he went through a lot of things that, you know, made him that type of person, that underdog type of guy. And, and I'm always going to root for guys like that. And, you know, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, Jackie Chan, Brandon Lee, Dolph Lundgren, Steven Seagal. You know, I've always liked those guys a lot. And, of course, Jean-Claude Van Damme. And I think Van Damme is one of my favorites out of those. Um, I know a lot of people are probably shocked. Bruce Lee's not your favorite martial artist? No, because everyone says that. Everyone's favorite martial artist is Bruce Lee. Um, don't get me wrong, I love Bruce to death. He's definitely the greatest martial artist of all time. Um, he left us way, way, way too soon because I think he had a lot to accomplish yet. Um, I love his son, Brandon. Brandon was another guy that left us way, way, way too soon. Um, I think he had a lot of great, uh, movie roles, not just action films, but I think dramatic films. And I think he would have gone into, into directing, um, you know, but up until probably... About a year ago, I would have said Chuck Norris is my favorite. And Chuck is another guy that I, I love to death because he's just, you know, he came from nothing. I mean, literally, he came from nothing. His family was dirt poor. You know, he was, um, you know, he said, uh, I think he was on welfare for like 10 years or something. Like his family was like that, it was that bad. Like they were dirt poor. And, you know, he was just a shy kid and got picked on and, you know, went into the military, studied martial arts, became a, a world champion, and made a bunch of good movies, and, you know, Walker, Texas Ranger, and the guy is self-made, you know, he made himself, you know, no one helped him along the way, and I always love that, you know, and all these other guys, you know, but I think now, and probably for a while, I will say Jean-Claude Van Damme is my favorite out of the action guys, because Jean-Claude... He has a very interesting story, in my opinion. Um, again, he he wasn't dirt poor, but, you know, he was, like, middle class. Like, his family was middle class in Belgium. Again, you know, he was, like, he was the little guy. You know, he got picked on. You know, he had these big glasses when he was a kid. If you look up pictures of when he was a kid, you'll see. You know, he always got picked on, and, you know, he was just... I don't think he had a lot of self-esteem as a kid, which, I, and, you know, Chuck Norris, a lot of these guys didn't, which, you know, that's why they became bodybuilders and martial artists, to build that confidence, which is awesome. That's great. More people, kids today should do shit like that instead of playing on the phone the whole time. And, 
you know, Jean-Claude got involved with martial arts and ended up becoming a, a fighter. You know, he people still to this day don't believe that Van Damme is a was a professional fighter. He was. He was a professional kickboxer. And he was good. He only lost one fight. He was 18-1 and one in his professional record. And all 18 wins, he knocked them out. So there you go. And if you don't believe me, uh, there's videos here on YouTube. There's pictures. There's proof that Van Damme was a legitimate fighter. You know, same with Steven Seagal. A lot of people sh shit on Seagal as well. Well, Seagal never had his own dojo in Japan. Yes, he did. It wasn't his in name, but... He ran it. It was still technically his dojo. So there you go. You know, people, there, there is proof. You know, that's the thing. Like, same with um, another guy that I'm going to talk about when we kick off these Van Damme reviews. The video will be later on. But Frank Dukes, you know, the inspiration for Bloodsport. You know, a lot of people, even to this day, still shit on Frank Dukes and say, well, there was no Kumite and you never did this and you never did that. There is proof, folks. There is videos here on YouTube of Frank Dukes fighting in the Kumites. There is videos of him breaking the bottles and breaking the bulletproof glass. The proof is right in front of you. You just choose to ignore it. But that's going to be another video. Um, I would, uh, I'll save that towards the end. I don't want to do, like, blood sport and then break it and then do other, you know. So I'll do the Frank Dukes video at the end. I think that'll be a good time to do that. But... You know, Jean-Claude was, a, you know, he was a pro fighter. You know, he was a professional kickboxer. Um, I know he was on the the national team. I know he was supposed to go to the world championships, but I think a guy, like, in his group, like, they, they fought off and the guy beat him or something like that. Um, so he never made it to the world um, martial arts stuff, but... You know, he was a, he is a champion. You know, there there is proof out there. And again, just watch his films. Like, he is a legitimate martial artist. You know, he was the first guy to do, excuse me, the helicopter kicks and the big kicks. You know, Bruce Lee kicked, Jackie Chan kicked, but they didn't kick that high. You know, Van Damme was really the first guy to do that. Chuck Norris didn't even kick that high. And Chuck, look, Chuck Norris was a six-time world champion undefeated for six years you know so there you go so the proof is in the pudding but you know Jean-Claude got involved with martial arts very good at it obviously then I know he went to Hong Kong to make movies but that didn't work out so he came here to America I know it wasn't easy for him because you know he was dirt poor you know like Chuck Norris and a lot of these other guys he um he slept in his car you know he didn't know how to speak English you know, he stole food to feed himself, and um, I know, bef like, right before Bloodsport, that's when he got married to his current wife, Gladys, and he stole a pregnancy kit because she was pregnant with their son, Christopher, who was going on to become an actor, um, which I'll talk more about that when we get into the movies, you know. But, yeah, Van Damme, you know, he tried to do stunts. Like, I know, uh, actually, him and Chuck Norris were friends, for a long time. Him and Chuck have been friends for a very long time. And they used to work out together. And he got, uh, Chuck Norris got Van Damme a job on Missing in Action. He actually did stunts for Missing in Action, which is pretty cool. Um, and if you look in the credits, his name is in there. It says J. Claude Van Damme in there. Um, then, you know, he worked on Predator. He was the original guy in the suit when they had that really stupid looking costume. It looked like a monster from Power Rangers, to be honest. But Van Damme quit because, uh, number one, it wasn't working out. And number two, it was just very hot. And, you know, it wasn't what he was expecting it to be. But that's okay because I think that they made the right choice. Because the redesign is a hell of a lot better. And Van Damme would go on to do Bloodsport. Now, he did uh, No Retreat, No Surrender before, which was a... Uh, it is a cult classic. Uh, you can't deny that No Retreat, No Surrender is not a cult classic. Because it is. Um, and he did get some good notices in there. He's not in the movie very long, and I'm not going to review it because it's not a Van Damme film, technically. I will review all the No Retreat, No Surrender films because I actually enjoyed all of them. I will review them later down the road because um, I still need to get the last one, which was American Shaolin, and I'll explain all that when we get to the those reviews. 
you know, and Van Damme one night met uh, Menachem Golan, uh, the head of Canon Films, well, the uh, one of the head of Canon Films at the time. He met him, and he showed off his martial arts moves, and he called him into the office the next day, and he offered him Bloodsport. And the rest is history. Bloodsport came out, was a huge financial success. It made, I believe, $60 million worldwide on a budget of $1 million, so it was a huge financial success. And, you know, he did a couple more films at Canon, um, Cyborg, uh, Kickboxer, and Death Warrant. Death Warrant was actually a Canon film, um, but they went bankrupt, so they sold it to MGM, and I'll talk more about that in that review. And then Van Damme's movies were just making more money. You know, each movie was making more money. He was getting more publicity, more press, and... He was moving on to other projects, movies like Lionheart and Double Impact, Universal Soldier, Hard Target, Time Cop. You know, Van Damme had a really good run there in the 90s. You know, he was one of the biggest stars of the 90s. You cannot deny that. I'm sorry if people say that's not true. Uh, just look at his films. You know, look at his classic theatrical films. They all made money, and they all made good money. They made their budgets back. They were medium they were low the first couple were low budgets and then they were medium budgets you know like 10 million 20 million dollars like you know and they all made profits you know and van damme was on top of the world and i miss those days i know that i was a little boy but you know i remember when street fighter came out i know it was only two but i don't know how i remember that but i remember the promotion for the movie i remember the tv spots for the movie um, you know, and then at that time, you know, Van Damme got mixed up with drugs, which it happens. I know a lot of people want to condemn Jean-Claude and want to blame Jean-Claude for all that. But honestly, and I'll go when I talk more about his movies, I know I keep saying this, but I'll go more in depth when I get into the individual movie reviews. Um, I think he just got mixed up with the wrong people. I think once he was making all this money... You know, a lot of bad people came into his life, and they influenced him. And I think that's why he was a dick back in the day. And he said it himself. Like, he has gone on the record multiple times and said, Yeah, you know, I was not very nice. I was a jerk, and I hurt a lot of people that I didn't mean to hurt. And I'm sorry. You know, Van Damme has apologized numerous times. Which is why I don't understand why he's not still big in Hollywood. Which I'll get into in a minute here. And then also... In the individual reviews but I think once that became public the drug use and everything that's when people stopped going to his movies because I think people were really disappointed and upset and I know I was when I first heard about it I didn't hear about it till years later but you know it is disappointing but thank God he beat it you know he overcame his drug addiction um, he's been sober for I believe about 20 years, I think 99 he got sober, so we're getting close to 20 years there. Um, you know, and hey, you know, he's good now. You know, he's been good for a long time, and that that's great, you know. And he, I know he went to rehab, but it really didn't work, so he kind of just did it on his own. You know, he just started working out again. Because if you look at some of the later theatrical films, like... Um, even, like, the first couple directed video films, you can tell that Van Damme stopped working out as much because he looks a little heavier. He doesn't look as toned. Like, Desert Heat, that's one where you can tell that he wasn't working out. He looks heavier, not as athletic-looking as he... I mean, he still looks good. I mean, the guy's 55, and he still looks in great shape, um, which is awesome. I hope when I'm 55, I can look as half as good as that. But... Um, you know, he just started working out, and he just started getting in a, in a positive mind frame again, and I know he also, um, said that, you know, God helped him get through it, which is great, you know, that's awesome. Um, you know, and then he started making, you know, because Hollywood blacklisted him, which is bullshit, because, you know, he wanted, um, a lot of money. He wanted, like, $20 million a movie. And I understand that because his excuse, well, not his excuse, but his reasoning. It's not an excuse, it's a reasoning. Um, he's like, well, you know, Jim Carrey did a couple movies and they were big hits and he gets $20 million a movie. Why can't I get $20 million? And he got blacklisted, which is bullshit. Look at all the other celebrities out there 
that have used drugs habitually, that have not stopped using drugs habitually, and have, you know, pissed off everybody in the business, but yet they're still in the spotlight, you know? Uh, Drew Barrymore is a great example. Look at her. You know, she was hooked on drugs very early, you know, and she pissed a lot of people off, including Steven Spielberg. The dude's a schmuck anyway, but, you know, he's still a very powerful person in Hollywood. But she cleaned herself up, and she's still a huge star, you know? I, I just, I never understood, and even Steven Seagal, like, I know Steven Seagal has an ego, which, again, a lot of other actors do. Steven Seagal is not the only person with a big ego. I don't understand why people think that, but oh well. I don't understand why these guys got blacklisted. I really do not. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. You know, Van Damme, his movies made a bunch of money. You know, he had a longer run than Seagal. Uh, he made better movies than Seagal. I mean, I love the early Steven Seagal films, but... You know, once you get into the directed video stuff, it's just, I'm sorry, it's just a mess. You know, Van Damme, the directed video stuff, most of them I've enjoyed. There's been a couple that were really shitty. Derailed, the Universal Soldier sequels, the later ones. Um, Second in Command and the Hardcore are time wasters. I don't really like those movies. I mean, I don't hate them. Um, they're just... You know, they're mediocre films, you know, it's just as simple as that. And I'll probably, once I'm done these reviews, trade those in because I'm not ever probably going to watch them again. Um, it was bad enough I had to sit through the hardcore because it's a boring movie, nothing happens, but I'll get into that. But, yeah, I don't, I don't understand why, and, you know, Van Damme, again, he has apologized numerous times for his behavior back in the day. And, you know, when JCVD came out, he got all these praise and everything, and what happened? Nothing. He still went back and did directed video films. Granted, some of them have been good. Six Bullets, Enemies Closer. But, you know, Van Damme should still be making theatrical films. I'm sorry. I wasn't picking my nose. It was itching. Um, you know, Van Damme should still be in the spotlight. You know, in an era when all we have is comic book movie after comic book movie after superhero movie, shitty sequels, shitty remakes, um, you know, the same generic movies year in and year out. Van Damme can bring some much-needed life into cinema. Are they going to be original movies? No, but it'll be great to see Van Damme back in the spotlight. And for God's sake, Jean-Claude, I love you, but can you smile a little bit in your films? I don't understand why ever since he did, um, well... Uh, rep I guess Replicant. Ever since, like, Replicant, he's just been... Like this, in all of his movies. I don't understand why he's just stone-faced, and he's, like, angry all the time and depressed. Like, I miss the, th the theatrical years. You know, movies like Bloodsport, Kickboxer, Double Impact. Uh, Street Fighter. I love Street Fighter. Um, Sudden Death. You know, movies where... Yeah, Sudden Death, it's a little... Time Cop, they're a little more serious, but there were still moments of humor. Van Damme is smiling. Van Damme is happy. Like, I miss that guy. Like, I know in Welcome to the Jungle, which he was great in that movie, he's smiling and having a good time. Where's that? Where's that Van Damme? I miss that guy. I want him to come back. I want the old Van Damme to come back. Because um, I know he's shifted more towards dramatic films, which is uh, the great thing about independent movies which most of the directed video films are independent you can do different things you don't have to be set to certain movies which I think is great about Van Damme I mean I'm glad that he's done those kind of movies but when it's every movie it's get it gets old you know I want you know break it up do like a couple like serious movies and then just do something like The Order like The Order is a lot of fun very fun directed video film Van Damme is happy, and he's smiling, he's carrying on, good action, you know. But I think that's the last movie where he did, like, the big kicks, because I know he had um, something, with, something with his leg. I know it was his knee or his hip or something. He had a serious injury from years before, and, and it just got worse, and I know that he's not really supposed to do those anymore. Um, I missed those, but oh well. But, yeah, I know I've kind of gone on here for far too long, but 
I'm trying to get to the point. But, yeah, I just don't understand why Van Damme got blacklisted. And, again, his directed video films, the theatrical films, most of them I like. Um, the only one that I, I would say was my least favorite was Knock Off, because it's just a weird movie. It really is. It's just weird, which I'll get into again. Um, the theatrical, huh, the directed video movies, they're a mixed bag. And, th again, that's not a bad thing, because... Um, you know, there's a couple that were fun, like old school, um, like Desert Heat and The Order, Welcome to the Jungle, he got to do a comedy role, which was great, and then m most of the other ones are just him being serious, or Enemies Closer was great because he got to play a bad guy, but he was a fun bad guy, you understand, see, like in that movie, you know, he's crazy, but it's, you know, it's great, it's like Dolph Lundgren in Universal Soldier, and I'm like, okay, cool, you know, this is, I want to see more of this. You know, and I thought he was great in Expendables as the bad guy, which, I don't know what's going on with Expendables 4, not really looking forward to it. But hell, bring Van Damme back for Expendables 4, make him the twin brother, like double impact, but make him a good guy this time. I don't want to see Van Damme as another bad guy. He's played the bad guy way too much. Enough with the bad guy stuff. But, you know, a lot of the, the dramatic ones, like Replicant, Replicant's got a lot of good action in it, um, but there is some very serious moments in the movie. But that proves, you know, stuff like that, In Hell, Wake of Death, uh, Until Death. But it proves that Van Damme can actually act. You know, people have said, oh, he can't act, he can't act, he's just a kickboxer. No, Van Damme, like, he can hold his own, trust me, you know. Excuse me. He's definitely a better actor than Steven Seagal. I'm sorry, I love again, I love Seagal. But, Van I'm sorry, Van Damme is a better actor. Uh, martial artist-wise, they're two completely different um, uh, disciplines. I don't like the word styles when it comes to martial arts. But they're both great martial artists, but I think Van Damme is a better actor, and I enjoy his movies more. I'm sorry. I love, again, the theatrical stuff of Seagal. There's a couple directed video films that I thought were pretty good. Most of them, it's a mixed bag. Some are okay, some are shit. Um, but I think Van Damme holds a better track record, which is why I don't understand why he's not in more theatrical films. Even if he's just in a supporting role. I want to see him on the big screen again. But oh well. But, yeah, I mean, he's had a great career. Um, again, the theatrical years were the best, in my opinion, because... He made some good movies, and he tried different things. You know, Seagal, again, I know I keep comparing the two, but that's because they were, that was, in the 90s, it was Van Damme and Seagal. You know, that was what was going on. In the 80s, it was Stallone and Schwarzenegger. So there you go. Seagal always played the same character. He was either a cop, or he was in the CIA, and then he became a cop, or he was a soldier, that was in the CIA, like, he always played the same guy, you know, it was like, they should have just called every movie Above the Law, Part 1, Part 2, Part 9, Part 12, because it was the same character, every single time. Seagal, I love, again, I love those movies, but it's the same guy, Steven Seagal, the CIA agent that became a cop, that was a soldier. It's like, come on, do something different. Van Damme did different stuff, you know, the first couple movies, you know, Bloodsport, Kickboxer, he was a martial artist. Okay. Death Warrant, he was a cop. Cyborg, he was a mercenary or a slinger. You know, whatever you want to call him. Universal Soldier, he was a soldier that got killed and got brought back. Okay, that's different. Nowhere to Run, he was an outlaw. It's, you know, Nowhere to Run is pretty much a Western. Uh, Hard Target, you know, he was in the Marines and then he was just a merchant sailor. He was down on his luck. You know, he had to go fuck all these guys up. Time Cop, okay, he was a cop that could travel through time. It's different. Sudden Death, he was a firefighter. Okay, these are, you know, every character was different. You know, Universal Soldier, The Return, you know, now he's human again. You know, now he's back to normal. Fun movie. You know, really, really underrated sequel. I love Universal Soldier, The Return. You know, even the directed video films, you know, Replicant, he, I loved how he played a bad guy and a good guy. I loved how he was a serial killer and then he was the clone. That was a really good, I love Replicant. I, that's one of his best directed video films. You know, Six Bullets, he's a mercenary. 
Um, you know, until death, you know, he's a cop that's hooked on drugs. You know, it's, it's different characters every time. You know, even, again, Steven Seagal, the directed video films, he's in the CIA, but then he's not in the CIA, but then he's a cop that was in the CIA. Then he was a soldier that was in the CIA, and then this, and then that, and then in, you know, the last couple movies, it was supposed to be a trilogy. He was a criminal, warlord, whatever, and then he was a mercenary, and then he was a vigilante, and then it went back. Like, it's so fucking confusing. You can't differentiate which movie you're watching. I'm sorry, Seagal. I'm sorry, but it's the same movie every time. Something happens to his family, he's got to go get him, and he gets mixed up with the government again. It's the same fucking movie. I'm sorry. And the, the only movie that he didn't do that was Against the Dark, and that movie was not that good. I'm sorry. They tried to do something different, but it didn't work. So, but yeah, you know, Van Damme, I, lo I love the guy to death. I do right now. He's my favorite action star. He probably will be for a while. You know, I grew up on pretty much all his theatrical films. The only ones I didn't grow up with is Cyborg, Nowhere to Run, and uh, Knock Off. Because Double Team, I remember watching a bunch as a kid. Um, Maximum Risk, I remember watching a couple times as a kid. The Quest, yeah, I remember watching that one. Uh, Universal Soldier The Return, I didn't see till later. And Desert Heat. I remember watching Desert Heat quite a bit when I was a kid. I like that movie, though. But, yeah, um, I love the guy to death. Um, I really wish he would just get another shot at the big time. You know, I wish he would just be in more theatrical films, stop doing these stupid commercials. Like, I don't understand why the media is make you know, has to make a joke of all these action heroes. Like, Arnold was... You know, he was on, like, The Tonight Show doing parodies of all his movies. I thought that was stupid. I thought when he was on Jimmy Fallon, he was like, Get to the chopper! The whole time, that was stupid. You know, Van Damme, like, the, the Volvo commercial, that was cool. You know, because that was real. I thought that was pretty badass. Um, I liked the one, the GoDaddy commercials, because he was being funny. Like, he was smiling, he was having fun. It's like, oh, that's the old Van Damme. But, like, when he was on... I think it was Conan O'Brien or something, and he was dancing, like, in Kickboxer, and then he fought all these guys. It's like, come on, seriously, knock it off, Hollywood. Give these guys the glory they deserve, not this stupid shit. But yeah, I know I've gone on for almost 30 minutes, but I love Jean-Claude Van Damme. Um, I am definitely looking forward to reviewing his movies, because I've never reviewed them before, and... Especially the theatrical films. I'm just going to be all giddy and be happy and have a smile on my face. Which is what I need because I've been going through some dark times. But again, I will explain that in a later video for everybody. But yeah, I will do the reviews of all his films except No Retreat, No Surrender because he's not the star. And then I will do at the end a video about Frank Dukes. Because I would like to talk about Frank Dukes. Um, since I know the guy gets a lot of shit, I personally like the guy, um, never met him, but I would like to, which I will talk about. But anyway, folks, I hope that you enjoyed this video, kicking off the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie reviews. I hope that you enjoyed the teaser that I uploaded, and, uh, stay tuned, because next I'm going to be starting it off with the one that made Jean-Claude Van Damme a superstar, Bloodsport. Definitely one of my favorites of his. Definitely one of the best martial arts films of all time, without a shadow of a doubt. And I uh, can't wait to sit down and talk about Bloodsport. It'll probably be like a 35, 40 minute review because I love the movie that much. But anyway, folks, uh, hope that you like this video. And I hope that you are looking forward to what's coming up next. Take care and sayonara.